My name is Asia Set. You know what? I am too excited. I'm not even going to do an opening intro. So let's talk grails. At the root of it all, the actual definition for a grail is something that is impossible to get. But these days, people have sort of just been using that term loosely to describe something that they covet but is almost unattainable. Do you have a grail? Like, you know, that one piece of gear that you just want so badly, but it's either really hard to get or it just costs way too much money for you to justify spending for it. Well, I do. For a while now, I have been fanboying over this one particular company that just makes killer, killer lights. They're an Australian-based company and I have seen their products pop up a bunch of times on different overlanding channels. And every time I saw them, I would be like, one day I'm gonna own a pair of off-road lights from that company. And then they released these brand new lights. It was like a hybrid between HID and LEDs. And the moment I saw those, I was like, yeah, that's my grail. A pair of them will set you back about $1,300. I knew that I would get it. Like that was a given. Eventually I would get it. But for $1,300, there were still things on the Jeep that I needed to address first. So I sort of just kind of put it in the back burner. But today I am excited to say I actually own those lights. But you know what? We'll get back to that. Let me show you first what it is for replacing. These are the ARB IPF lights. This was actually the very, very first mod I did to the Jeep way before I even had this channel. But even back then, even before I knew what I was doing, the one thing I did know was that when it came to off-road lights, that was the one area that I was not going to skimp on. These are the lights that we rely on to see down the road when it's really, really dark. So I went with the ARB IPFs, 6 inch in diameter and $182 for a pair, which it was a really good price point for me. But through the years, as I started to rig this vehicle up even more, I wanted to upgrade these to the ARB Intensity Solus lights, which run about $900 a pair until I learned about another Australian company who specializes in nothing but off-road lights and I just fell in love. So I'm sorry ARB, I am still a huge fan of your products, but when it comes to off-road lights, we are switching from this to light force. They are one of the premium companies making high quality lights. And if you were to compare them to other companies that make lights, you would find them in the upper echelon up there with Baja Designs and KC Highlights. So they asked me, all right, well, what light do you want to review? And I threw out what I would consider my reasonable option, right? Like I know my subscriber count isn't super high. And what I asked for was the Blitz halogen lights. They run about $300 a pair, nine inches, very robust, very bright. But then they responded to me and said, well, if you're going to review something, we would rather that you review the HTX twos because those are our favorite lights. And oh my God, my mouth dropped. Those are my grail lights and I cannot believe they're going to be sending it to me. This is going to be another one of my favorite unboxings yet. Let me show you what they sent. The wiring harness. This is the HTX wiring harness and check this out for use with third party switch control systems. Did you get that? That means that if you already have a switch control system built into your rig, like an S pod or like an Apollo Intech, like I have, then you don't need to do anything else. Most times when I buy lights from other companies and I get their wiring harness, I end up having to chop up that wiring harness to get rid of the relay and the switch because I don't need all that stuff. But Lightforce, knowing that many of us run switch control panel systems in our rigs, they just decided to make a wiring harness that will accommodate that. This just makes it so much easier. Covers. Covers are awesome. You're gonna pay a lot for these lights. What you don't want is getting them scratched up. I mean, you're driving down the road, there's debris that's gonna hit it. Or if you're hitting the trails, there's gonna be branches that's slapping up against it. So when you're not using your lights, protect them by using these covers. It'll just make sure that your lights last for a really, really long time. Plus they actually look really good. Like they're just simple. Black with the Light Force logo on the front. That's it. I think it's gonna look really, really nice. These are the HTX2s and you can clearly see why these are Lightforce's flagship lights. Look at these. They're massive. Compared to the size of my face, 
they're humongous. Dead in the middle are your HIDs. That's just gonna throw light way down the road for you. You'll be able to see where you're going, but then along the perimeter, you get 20 LED lights so that you can just flood the entire area in front of you. I mean, you're getting two kinds of lights. And what's even better is that they decided to put that into two different power supply systems. That way, if you wanna just turn on just the outer rim, or you just wanna turn on just the middle, you can do so, or you can turn them both on at the same time and get complete coverage. Like, come on. Combined HID and LED produces one lux at 1,768 meters. You get a 70 watt HID bulb within a 170 millimeter reflector for distance. So that's gonna throw a light really, really far out. You get 20 genuine LumiLeds LEDs, which provides your flood beam pattern. You get stainless steel hardware, which is really important because every time I get hardware for lights, they're always rusting out. High current waterproof connectors. It's Australian made and it comes with a three year warranty. But honestly, all of that is just words and numbers and anything can look good on paper. The real question is, can they perform? Let's get out the old lights, let's put these new ones on, and let's test them out. You're probably wondering why I went and took off the grill. Don't worry, it's actually not part of the light install. The reason I did it is because my good friends at Vinyl Brothers took my old OEM grill and wrapped it in this sweet carbon fiber wrap. It looks so good. It's going to give it that utilitarian feel. Like I just think it's going to look much better than the chrome. Check them out, man, because they do really, really good work. The only modifications I had to do was to replace the loop connector at the end of the negative wire because it was too large to fit into the negative terminal of my switch pod. I also added loop connectors to the ends of the yellow and red wire. What you don't see is I did shorten the wires because the harness gives you a lot of wire to work with and I didn't want to bunch them all up inside my engine bay. From there, it's as simple as plugging them back into the switch pod. There are three wires you need to plug in. The red wire, which turns on the HID driving lights, goes into the positive terminal of one switch, and the yellow wire, which turns on the LED floodlights, goes into the positive terminal of another switch. Then the black wire can be grounded anywhere in the engine bay, or you can plug it into one of the negative terminals in your switch pod, which I decided to do. Now all that's left is to test the light before I tidy everything up. Hey, remember when I said this? This just makes it so much easier. You should never, ever, ever say something is going to be simple because something will come up. Now don't get me wrong, wiring this thing up could not be any simpler. With the switch pod system that I have, it's just plug and play. And mounting the lights could not be any simpler because the ARB bumper has brackets made specifically for off-road lights. The problem was when it was time to marry the wiring with the mounting, because as soon as I plugged the wires into the back of these lights, 
it would not clear my winch. Now this has nothing to do with light force lights. Where you plug in the wires could not be in a better place. It's right at the bottom, kind of gets the wires out of the way. And it's also not on ARB's bumper because the brackets they have actually kind of extrude out a little bit to give you some clearance, but it was just the perfect storm of things not fitting because I simply said that this was going to be an easy job. It was a pretty simple fix. I just needed to clear by like half an inch. So I unmounted the lights and I bored two new holes in front of the original holes in the light bracket and everything fit just fine. You know what I think would be cool though is the next time ARB makes these brackets, instead of one big hole in the middle, just make like a slot. That way you can drop in your light, move it frontwards and backwards in order for you to clear whatever it is that's behind there. And I think that would just be a lot more versatile for us to put whatever kind of light we want to mount on there. Feminine issues aside though, I am really, really loving that wiring harness, man. Like, I'm just so glad that Lightforce had the foresight to create a wiring harness that was made specifically for those of us who run these switch pod type systems. What I also really liked about that wiring harness is that it already splits into the two different lights for you. That way you're not having to take wires from both lights, splice them together, and then have them run to one switch. It is literally plug and play. Like, literally, plug and play and you are good. Now what I also really liked was their lens protection. Most times when you buy other lights, for example my ARB IPFs, you'll get a cage similar to this. And the cage is just there to help prevent any rocks or debris from hitting the lens behind it and damaging your light. Well, Lightforce was like, why would we want to cover up our really, really bright lights with a cage? So what they decided to do was go with covers. And when you buy the HTX2s, you'll get two pairs. You'll get the black and you'll get the clears. So daily driving, you're not using your lights, you're not going off-roading, throw the black ones on there. And then when you get to the trails or you're needing to use your lights, then pop the black ones off, put the clear ones on and you are good to go. Super easy to swap out and they're really, really secure. Make sure you use them because you're going to be paying a lot for these lights and the last thing you want is some rock or debris or a branch to hit that light, crack your lens, and now you are laying in fetal position crying yourself to sleep at night. Oh, real quick tip. Because these covers are made of plastic, as you know, sometimes clear plastic will start to scratch up or you'll get spots or they might yellow out. If that happens, you can definitely use Meguiar's plastics. Don't worry, this is not sponsored by Meguiar's. Man, I use this stuff for everything. I use it for headlights, I use it for lights, I use it for even my motorcycle helmet lens. This helps just get rid of a lot of scratches and spots and it'll help bring back that clearness when it starts to yellow out. All right, but enough of the features. I know you were dying to see how this thing performs and I'm excited to show you how this thing performs. We're gonna go ahead and compare it to my old ARB IPFs so you can see if there's a difference. Now, should you be surprised there's a difference? Of course not. I mean, we're going from a halogen light to a combination HID LED light, and we're going from six inches to a humongous nine inch light. So there better be some differences, but I'm gonna show you anyway. I know there was going to be a huge difference, but even if I wasn't comparing it, the light output alone of these lights is just ridiculous to me. It's so bright and it shoots out so far. By the way, shout out to my friends who've been making jokes all weekend about how huge these lights are. The winner of the best joke goes to my friend Chris Chubb who asked me, hey, are those lights able to tilt all the way back so they can point straight up? And I'm like, well, why would I want to do that? And he's like, because the heat that those lights are giving off, we can cook on it. One last thing I did want to mention before we go, because it's something I haven't seen anybody really talk about yet when it comes to these lights. Of all the lights I have ever owned, going all the way back to my import tuner days, these lights have got to be the most precise and most accurate light I have ever owned. Like, for example, check this out. Here are the HIDs. I mean, look at those two spots. Not only are they precise, but look around the edges. Like, it's so perfectly focused. Now look at the LEDs. Not only are they super bright, but they're creating clean concentric circles. Like look at the edges. There's not light that's spilling in different places. It's aimed properly. And man, I have never ever seen a pattern like this. Now look at both of them turned on. I think it's pretty safe to say you pretty much have your lighting needs covered. 
If this was a post-apocalyptic scenario, you are definitely attracting zombies. And with that, we are left with the one final important question, and that is, at $1,300, would I have bought these lights had they not been given to me? Um, yeah. These are my grail lights, and I knew that eventually I would be owning them. And I get it, not everybody's gonna have a $1,300 budget for some off-road lights, and that's totally fine and totally understandable. Good news is that Light Forest does offer other products that might suit your budget. For example, the Blitz HID lights. Same size as these, 9 inches, I believe you can even get the 12 inch ones. Full HID, so you don't get the LED surrounds like you do with these HTX2s. And those run about four to $500 a pair, and that's not bad at all. And I believe you can get the halogen version of those that's even cheaper, I believe at $300 a pair. So just take a look on their site. They also have a new product called the Strikers, and the Strikers are these rectangular lights, super bright. Get a couple of those, put those on the bull bar, or put them on the roof rack, put them wherever. Light Force has a ton of great lights, and as you can see, their light output is phenomenal. But anyway, that's it. I have no idea how long this video is now, and honestly, I really don't care. This was a huge upgrade for me, you guys. I have been coveting these lights for a really, really long time, and now I own them. I did want to thank Light Force for sending these over. Like, you have no idea how much you made my day, and I am honored that you decided to work with me. Like, I just keep looking at the Jeep like, man, front end done. Like there is nothing left I need to do to the front. I got the bumper I wanted, got my antenna on there, got the lights I wanted, got a winch on there. And also shout out to Vinyl Bros for wrapping my grill with that carbon fiber. It just, man, that front end just looks, ugh. Now moving on to the back and to the sides and we'll get to that and finally finish this build. But Builds are never finished. If you like this video, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and also consider supporting us on Patreon so we can continue to make more content like this. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. My name is Asia Sampson, and I will see you next time. And, and then my friend Ron was like, you turn those lights on and the entire Jeep shuts off. Yeah, I, I have no idea why I'm friends with these people.